name is Fonda Arbetter, and I am interviewing Kathy Rosenstock for the One Story at a Time Project, Viva Shalom, celebrating Latin American Jews in Dallas. Hello, Kathy. Hi. Will you please tell us where you are from originally? I'm originally from San Jose, Costa Rica. And talk about when and why your family originally immigrated to Costa Rica. My, both of my parents came to Costa Rica as teenagers. Uh, my grandfather, in, my two grandparents, my grandfathers in both sides came along before from Poland. My, my grandfather from my father's side came from a little town, little shtetl, uh, close to Warsaw, called Jelochov. Uh, he came in the early 30s, one of the first second uh, group of Jews that came to Costa Rica. The first group of uh, Jews that came to Costa Rica came in the, in the 1800s, and uh, they assimilated, they didn't, built a community. My grandfather was one of the first ones. Uh, they came from this town that I'm telling you, uh, Yelohov. They, were, they went to look for a place to run away and Costa Rica was offering a, a visa. They had no idea where they were going and they just got in the boat and came to, to Costa Rica. Why, why did they not why did they get a sense that Poland wasn't good for them long-term? Well, basically what I understood, there was a lot of anti-Semitism going around. In the 1800s? No, in the 30s. We're talking about the 30s. The first group of Jews that came, came from the Sephardic Jews and that community doesn't exist. They disappeared, they assimilated. The second group of Jews that came to Costa Rica came in the early 30s. Most of them came actually from the same little shtetl that my parents came from. And uh, um, the, the... So they recognized early on that Poland was not gonna be yeah. good for them. For what I understand, there was a lot of financial issues also. Like my, the shtetl when my father came from, they were very close to the Russian, uh, Frontier. They during the first war, they were the ones uh, making the boots for the Russian army. Once the war was over, that was no longer a business. So they they just were very poor. They were looking for new opportunities. They all have very big families. My grandfather came first. Then uh, actually, there is a story that he arrived in Colombia. And there were people from his town in Colombia. They told him to stay in Colombia. And uh, he stayed, he started working and they put him in jail because he was illegal. So he had to wait in jail until the next boat came and he arrived in Costa Rica. Um, he was, uh, my father was the oldest. He saved money for a few years and brought my father that was 18 years old, the oldest of the family. The story of my, of my, of my father's side of the family is really interesting in the sense that they were uh, six more children and it would have taken a very long time for the family to save the money to, to bring everybody. And my grandfather played the lottery from Panama and won the first prize. And that money uh, saved my family. Saved, uh, they were able to come to, uh, to bring the whole family to Costa Rica. So what is your grandfather's name? My grandfather's name was Dov. Spell it. D-O-V, last name Brochberger, R-O-C-H-W-E-R-G-E-R. And how, who did he marry? He married Sarah Roskovich. And this is the picture of them. Spell, oh, spell Roskovich. So can, can you see? This is my Rochberger grandparents. Um, R-O-S-G-O-V. 
is W I T C. Okay, something like that. That's my grandma. And what is this picture of? This is a picture of. Uh, they were already in Costa Rica in 1950. Is this an anniversary book? No, this is um, the story of my family. Actually, here there are a lot of. Who uh, compiled this book? Uh, the family. We we were. This is a very interesting picture. I don't know if there is a way to show sure. it here. This is the whole family back in Poland. And uh, what's, what? How do you spell the city that you're from, Jelo? Jelohov is spelled. Let me. Z e l e c h o w. So if you see that picture, this is the house that I actually find when I went to Poland with the picture. Speak. Uh, and these are all the children, and they were shoemakers, and they are barefoot. That tells you how poor they were, okay? Uh, on my mother's side, my grandfather, my mother's side, my mother's family is from the next shteto. That is a, big, a little bit bigger city. I, I actually was very lucky to go and visit the two cities. Did they meet in Poland? Um, my grandparents, yeah. Yeah, they have all these kids, okay? How many kids do they have in Poland? Um, six, seven, six. Okay. And they, my my grandfather from my mother's side is from Lukow, L-U-K-O-W. That is a little bit of, much more of a city. I had the privilege to be in both places and find a lot of the memories from my family. My grandfather was, uh, from my father's side, from what I hear, at that time, the Jews were communists, Zionists, or Orthodox. <laughs> that was the three choices. My father's side of the family, they were all communists. <laughs> they okay. were, from my father, mother's side of the family, the title bounds, they were a little bit more better off. Actually, when I visited the town, they had a building, they have rentals, they were, and he was very, very religious. So my grandfather from my mother's side came to the port of Limon, that is in the Caribbean, in the boat. The same reasons, they were running away from my- Wait, 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 tell me this again. You're, they got in a boat to the Caribbean? No, they, Costa Rica has coast in the Caribbean. Okay. So that's how it came. He came to Limon, is the port where the boat comes. They all came that way. Let me get this straight. Yeah. Who was on the boat? Well, exactly. First, my, my grandfather from my father's side your, your, came on. Your father's father was the first person. Not the first, one of the first. Of the family, was, of the family. From the family, and he was one of the first. Uh, he was the first was, in your family. Yeah to come to Costa Rica. Correct. On my mother's side, my grandfather also came along. The same plan, they come along. But not on the same boat. No, they were not in the same boat. My grandfather from my mother's side was a very orthodox man. Okay. So he arrived in this tropical place, hot and humid, with the long beard and the hat and the, the whole- And they were accepted. They, well, he, he got to Costa Rica. He has never worked in his life. He was a Torah. Sure. He was studying Torah all his life. He was never happy about it. And he was the first rabbi of that community, my grandfather. He was not a rabbi, but he was Orthodox. He and, was, and you spelled his name before. My grandfather was Solomon Teitelbaum, T A I T E L B A U N. It's T A T A, not T I T E I. No, title, no, with an A. With That's an what, A. That was the way they spell it when they got there. Who knows how 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 it got to there? So he works a few years. He hated the whole Costa Rica. Yeah, he experience. hated. He worked with a horse. He had the big coat. All all what he believed at the totally out of sorts. Totally out of place. He brought my uncle. My uncle Moises, that was uh, uh, studying to be a, a, a sofer, 
again he writes Taurus. Huh? He wrote Taurus. Yeah, right. So they were very, very religious people. So my uh, my uncle also came to work, and they were a little bit misplaced. You know, the the experience of my father when he got to Costa Rica, he was very liberating for him. The people were very nice. Costa Rican people were always very welcome to Jews. And my father felt like everybody was a Jew. He said, it looks, it looks like everybody's a Jew. Costa Rica, there are 3,000 Jews. But if you ask a Goy, they will tell you that there are a million Jews. <laughs> because... let, let me ask you something. Who, who's the, the, the first person that figured out that Costa Rica would accept Jews? I have no idea. That I have no idea. My father used to say that they went to a, an office in Warsaw and they were looking for a place to go. And so they like said a consulate? They was... had, no, no, no. It was like an agency to go out. And they will give you a list of places. And there was a quota to America. They were all coming to America, basically, but... They didn't make it. So it's before <laughs> Hitler really came to yeah, power. The, the two of them, like my father's side of the family, they were all safe because of the lottery ticket that they play forever, the same number, my father and my uncles, because it saved their life. My mother's side of the family, they keep working and working to bring one at a time. My, he was able to bring the daughters that were single. The two daughters that were married, one, he was the Shohen, and uh, he made the, 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 the kosher meat. meat. The kosher meat. Uh, he was supposed to get in the boat on a Saturday, and he refuses. So he was killed with six children, and the other one, just they didn't have the money. They were doing it by steps. And the oldest one had two children and she was killed with her husband. So you have family that, that was, was yes. killed. My mother's yes. two sisters and their families were killed in the Holocaust. But so, half your family escaped. Yeah, because when they were doing it like slowly because it's money. They had to have the ticket for the boat and they have to pay for all the stuff. And they will, they, they will tell you the story that they would bring a blanket to the president to to sign the papers for the, for the visa. And they were doing it slowly. My father's side was lucky that they, he, with the lottery, and brought everybody at the same time. Otherwise, it took them a long time. And in Costa Rica, you don't know if the, if the other Costa Rican Dallas sides told you the story, but they just came to be uh, clappers. You know what clappers are? They, they, they were, they help the Germans? No. Clapper, that's the, where they make a living. They will buy, let's say, four blankets. And they will go house to house selling the, 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 the blankets. And the population was so poor, they couldn't pay the tres colores that the blanket cost. So they will sell it in credit. Okay. So they, they said that the Jews established the credit system in Costa Rica because they, like my grandfather, first he will go on a horse. He goes to this house, so he make a point. This is the yellow house across the thing or whatever. And they put 20 cents and 20 cents. And that's how the, the, the population of the country got access to stuff that they never had before because they were very poor. Uh, Did they make the blankets? No, they bought them, but they were give them on credit. And they come every week and make the rounds and charge. I still remember my father's. I, don't, I, I was not alive when my father was a clapper. But um, I remember the cards. It's a card. They had yellow house on the corner. They all be three colors. And they paid 25 this week and 25. And that's how they make their money. So... What year did your grandfather come to Costa Rica? I think 1930. And your uh, mother's family came close to close. that? I don't, I cannot, I cannot say which one came first. But and around when? the same time, I know that my, this, this grandma of mine, Bubasara, she had 
the the kosher house, most of them were just men that came to make a living and bring their family. So they all stay at my grandma's and she was in charge of the kosher food. All right, show me some of the other pictures. Uh, okay, of your family. so this gentleman right here, what did I do? This one? This one here is my mother's father. And tell me his name. Salomon Teichelbaum and Gita. He was a very severe uh, religious. He was the rabbi. He was the rabbi for a while because they did. He cut his beard. Yeah. Well, he, this is probably many years later, you know. Um, they, they were, I, I have a lot of respect for all of them because they, well, the first thing they did, they did a Hebrew Kedisha to, to um, I got a little place to bury the, the, the dead and uh, they did their little social area with their shul they make sure that there was always a minyan if somebody has to say Kaddish and being a, such a small community well I went to a Jewish school from preschool to high school half the Spanish half the Hebrew and they they had division and their pride and their, they were very poor they were making a living but they really wanted to establish the Jewish rules. So they had teachers. They and... brought teachers to teach the kids uh, bar mitzvahs and slowly, slowly I am the number four graduation from the school. The, school the fourth is, class? The fourth class, yeah. So uh, my father was very involved with the board of the uh, Centro Israelita. So tell, is... tell me about your uh, siblings. Okay, my parents uh, got married in Costa Rica. They came, my mother was 12, my father was 18 when they came. They were very few. So you, they make a shida between them. My mother always used to say that if they were in Poland, they would have never accepted my father because he was not religious, okay? Mm -hmm. So, but he, but he was Jewish. Yeah, you make whatever you have. Mm -hmm. And uh, my parents had a very hard life. Uh, my oldest brother, uh, Henry, that is, this one. This is Henry. He got polio in the 50s and was always in a wheelchair. Is he living now? You know, when he was 16 and I was four, he had a surgery that we, because he was in a lot of pain and he passed. So that's my oldest brother. Then I have my sister, Susie. Was there a lot of polio in Costa Rica? I assume that was before the vaccine. Okay. So yeah, in the fifties there was a lot of polio here too. Here too. My brother, my father, uh, took my brother to the United States, uh, and he was in a hospital in a, a how do you call it? One of those that held them with the pain and everything for six years. Rehab. So, rehab. It's a funny story because when my number five granddaughter was born, uh, uh, she's they live in New York. So uh, she was born. I figured out that she was born in the hospital in the in the upper west side. Where Henry was. So Henry was. Oh wow! Yeah. Yeah. It was so right. special. So there is my sister Susie. Uh, Where's Susie's picture? Susie's picture. <laughs> this is Susie. And where's Susie living? Susie lives in Costa Rica. And she married? She's married to Bill and she has four children. Uh, one of them lives here, Moshe, is married to the Jacobson daughter, to Lori. Uh, uh, Esme? Esme's, Esme es Jacobson's daughter. Yeah, Esme's son in law is my nephew, Moshe. This, this is Moshe. My sister's children are... So your nephew is married to Esme's yeah. daughter. Right. Uh, right. Yeah. And I make the Shida. <laughs> I did. I make the Shida. Yeah. So, that's so nice. Yeah. That's my sister. And we're very close. They we're very close siblings. By, between my sister and me, there was another brother that was mentally retarded that he passed a few years ago. And this is, this is Cyrus, this is Cyrus. 
How old was he? Uh, he passed, he was like 60. 16? 60. 60? Yeah, he was an adult. He was an, an adult. Institution. Yeah. And any others? And then my baby brother, after the, those problems my parents had, uh, I have a brother eight years younger than me. Okay. Uh, he lives in Israel. And this and is what's his name? Benny. 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 This is Benny. These and are my parents. Wait, Benny's married? Yeah, Benny's married. And he... When it, we, in Costa Rica, there is a tradition that when the Jewish kids finish high school, they nice. go for a year of Akshara in Israel. Of course, a gap year. Yeah, in Israel. Right. So my brother, who's very, very bright, uh, always said that he wanted to live in Israel. And he got, uh, during that year, he got ready to enter the Technion, which is like the MIT yeah. in Israel. And he got in. So okay. he stays. And he married Gila. Okay. She's from Istanbul. Okay. And he was a classmate. They have two kids. That's, well, this is a very old picture. This is Gal and Karen. Karen is a doctor in Beersheba. And she has a little girl, one and a half years old, and is pregnant, finishing the... So finish. what does your brother do? My brother is an engineer. He, he works for many, many years for IBM, and Gila works for, it, for the, uh, another one of those big... They have the same type of job, but now they have changed. They live in a beautiful place uh, south of Haifa okay. called Sichron Yaakov. And, but they also have an apartment in Tel Aviv. Oh, tell me about your children. Okay, my children, well, you don't want to hear about my husband. <laughs> Not yet, okay. <laughs> These are my three kids. He is going to be 44. Is he the oldest? Yeah. Uh, this is Aaron. He is 40. And this Wait, is... how do you spell it? A-R-O-N. Oh, A-R-O-N. And this is Javi. Uh, oh, Javi. Javi is uh, going to be 34. So 44, 40, and 34. They are all very. Uh, Eric, Eric is a, an attorney. He lives in New York. Uh, this is his second wife, Sarah. Uh, Eli is my oldest grandchild from the first marriage. And this is Alexandra. Beautiful. She, he is six, no, seven, and she is um, a little bit older than Javi. He is almost two years old in September. Then Aaron is, um, uh, Sarah is an attorney too. Uh, I don't, so two attorneys. Two attorneys, and then two, two doctors here. This is Aaron and his family. I don't know if you can see the picture well. He's an oncologist, and she's an OBGYN. And they live in Boston. In Boston. Uh, they have Liv that is six years old going into 25. And then they have the twins that are going to be four in the next week. Four. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Yeah. They have a beautiful family, really nice. And, uh, and Javi. And Javi, where is my Havala? Javi is married to Max. Javi works uh, in marketing in the fashion business. Uh, the Max is an attorney. They live here in Dallas and they have the little boy, Noah. That is a year, 14 months, no, 15 months now. Wait, Javi's in the fashion business? Yeah. She's, what does she do? She works for Stanley Courchette. Stanley Courchette. Yeah. She works for very, very years for Divas, but now she's with Stanley Courchette. She was with Neiman's. Yeah, for very, very years. Since she was a little girl. She's always worked with Divas. But she went, they met the American University, and she lived in Philadelphia for a while, and then finally they decided to come home because I didn't have anybody here. No, 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 <laughs> because they wanted to come. And she started working for, for Stanley Courchette. Okay, and... Tell me a little bit about Julio and when, how you got married, uh, when you got married, okay. where you met Julio. Julio's family originally came from Galicia in Poland. Uh, his father came from Galicia. His mother is from Warsaw. They immigrate from Poland 
to Argentina originally. And where did you meet Julio? The, where is that picture of Julio's family? Here is Julio's family. Uh, when my brother David, uh, my brother David uh, was born in Argentina, but Julio's father lived in Costa Rica. Julio's brother lives in Costa Rica and he was doing very well. So he asked his brother to come and they moved to Costa Rica and Julio was born in Costa Rica. He was, uh, he lived when he was a little kid in another province. And then when he was a teenager, they moved to San Jose. And we met in the, we, they had a very, at that point, uh, we had like a Zionist scouts, like an organization for kids. And uh, he was very involved. He was the head here. And of course you fall in love with the head of the place. He went to Israel during the Six Day War. I came back and was the leader of the uh, Zionist movement. And that's how we met. I, I think I know him since I was a little girl. Uh, the, we got married in 1975. And uh, we had uh, doctors in Costa Rica need to do a year of social service before they become officially doctors. So we, we got married because I wanted to go with him. I was very young and they wouldn't let me go. Right. <laughs> so we spent a year in a little town, a coffee town, uh, like two hours from San Jose, uh, called San Marco de Tarrazú. We lived there for a year and then uh, moved back to San Jose where I finished my studies and he finished his residency. And we had our first child, Eric was born in Costa Rica. Then um, we both got a scholarship to go to England to study. I did my master's there. In Indiana? In England, London. Oh, in England, in London? London. So I did my master's there and Julio did his. What did you study? I studied population studies. I did, I, I was, I had a BA in sociology. I did. From, from which college? From Costa Rica, in Costa Rica. And then, um, I did What's the name of the college? University of Costa Rica. Okay. That's where I did my first degree and my second degree. I studied two more years and it was a combined degree called Ciencias Sociales de la Salud, like social science and health. Okay. And then from there, I got a, a, a scholarship from the World Health Organization to study population studies in London, and Julio did his uh, endocrinology there. And how did y'all come to America? Right, so we, we went there for three years. My second son is British, our own, <laughs> yeah. We brought him back to Costa Rica when he was eight days old. The boy, you traveled with an eight day? Yeah. The all boy, to Costa Rica? Back to Costa Rica all the way. Well, we went to Miami first, but the boy didn't want it to do the breeze. He said, I am not doing the breeze and you're taking him to the other side of the world. So we stayed, we stayed in Miami for a few days and then he was like three weeks old when he got his, his cat. <laughs> yeah, he, ah, you need to be young to do those things. Uh, and then uh, we stayed in Costa Rica. That's a story. That's a story, I know. I have a very big world family there. Actually, at one point, I had the biggest family in Costa Rica. Everybody was related to me. And we love Costa Rica. We love growing up. It was very special times and very warm, very family. Lots, lots. It's home. It's home. It was hard for me to go to England. It was really hard. Uh, but then we were looking forward to come back home. At that time we arrived in Costa Rica, it was a very huge financial crisis in Costa Rica at that point. Julio always wanted to come uh, to the States. And in order for a physician to, to be able to practice here, you need to take like three million tests. And he was always taking them. And finally he finished. So he came for an interview here. Uh, he, uh, Julio's brother lives in Dallas. So we wanted oh, I didn't to know he had a brother. He has a brother. He's a rheumatologist. David. A rheumatologist? Yes. What's his name? David. David. 
David Rosenstein. David Rosenstein? Yeah, he practiced in Bissau. He was in Methodist for a long time, but now he's in Duncanville. Um, still in practice? Still in practice. He's six, six years older than Julio. So we tried to come to Dallas, and Julio got a position with the Southwestern. And we said, okay, let's try it. And it's 40 years later. So they, they brought a man from Costa Rica? Yeah. So we, we decided it was really hard for me to leave Costa Rica. We have stayed very close. We have made the purpose that at least once a year we will come. The kids always vacation in Costa Rica. They speak Spanish. They, they know all these stories that I'm telling you. Because for us, it's very important that they know their roots. Um, let me see. Hold on one second. Um, <sighs> Hold on one second. Tell me um, about the what it was like at the beginning of your life in Dallas and uh, your introduction to Jewish life here. Uh, was it the school? Was it the synagogue? Yeah, what happened? I always live very immersed in Jewish life. Immersed, absolutely. I always say, uh, well, socially, religiously, very Zionist. Absolutely. Etc. So we had two little boys at that point. Javi was born in Dallas. I have three different nationalities in my family. So we came poor, <laughs> okay? We couldn't afford a whole lot of things, but uh, Jewish studies was a priority. A new doctor start, starting yeah, out. Yeah. 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 So uh, for us, it was very important that the kids get Jewish education. So we start the kids, uh, Eric was in kindergarten and Aaron was in Butus when we came here. We went to Salomon Schechter when it was still in share at that point. And it was, they adapted that time. It was my family. Everybody has a South African accent when we came here. It was so funny. I, this is not the accent that I was. You brought the Latin American <laughs> yeah. part. Yeah, so uh, it was uh, at that point, Salomo Schechter was a school full of foreigners that grew up very similar to us. Like South Africans, for instance, they, they are very British and very proper and everything, but they have their Jewish identity is very Asia. similar, like us. So, it was a very easy transition. I make a lot of friends and the kids were friendly and, and I fell at home. I really fell at home, the JCC, the, but basically the school, we, after that joined Sherrod, we became very close with Wendy and Stefan. And because Tell of us the school, who they are. Uh, Wendy and Stefan were rabbi, the rabbi, at, the second rabbi at Sherrod Israel. Wendy was the Judaica head. The, Wendy Weinberg Wendy and Weinberg, Stephen rest Weinberg, in, Rabbi Stephen Weinberg. Rest in peace, Wendy. Uh, the girls became very good friends. Uh, my, it was an automatic thing. My Jewish identity was just part of it. And I've always felt very welcome by the Jewish community. Very, very welcome. It was a uh, the only hard part is that this place is that pretty, and Costa Rica is so pretty. So, what do you do on the weekends? You watch the Cowboys game. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> well, we have a good airport. Yeah. You can go yes. anywhere you want easily. Uh, yeah. So, but this has been a great place for us. We raise a family here. We have a lot of friends. You have done very well. Both I bought with him. Uh, it's been a great place, uh, but uh, the Jewish community was ultra welcoming, and I really find my place in Salom Shekhtar. So right. you um, get together with all your kids and all your grandkids all the time? Tell me well, about the traditions with your family. Well, uh, as I told you before, it was very important for Julio and I to have that relationship with our families back in Costa Rica. So we have make a tradition at the beginning, we always go the last week of the year. Oh, every, between Christmas and New Year, back, every year? Every year I meet with the kids, always. Everybody comes? Well, I'm talking when they were little and then... Uh, from New York and from Boston? No, 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 when they were little, everybody was... Uh, somehow 
we have kept it. It's been like one right or two years, like one year there was sick, cat diggers were about to get pregnant. So we went to this, they were, but somehow that, because they are also busy sometimes they come, they are together three days and one stay longer and the other stay. But we have tried that uh, 10 years ago, we bought a, a condo at the beach with that purpose. So sometimes we go also in the summer and everybody comes. Now we're building a house there. <laughs> we're gonna sell the condo, building a house. And the idea is uh, that those, that's how I see it, that the kids will spend a lot of time. The parents are very busy. They can deposit the kids in my, in my house. And, we spend, and you'll take care of them. Yeah. I, I think that even the little ones have some sort of relationship with Costa Rica. They know that the beach, because well, it's a fun place, you know, so they have good memories. And, and at this point in my life, that's what I want. I want my legacy to be very Jewish, but very Latin. And they have gone, as I said, I have this humongous family. I try not to miss any good occasions. So I want millions of weddings and bar mitzvahs and birthdays. Birthdays. And very close to my family. So, um, anything else you want to say as we wrap this up? Um, what else can I Any, say? You showed every picture you want to show? I don't know if I, yeah, I think I have. Well, this is a picture of my parents on their wedding day. And what day was that? They got married February 16. What year could that be? I don't know. In the 20s? No. no. Oh, no, no the 50s. No, no. 40s? 40s, maybe, because I'm number 40 in my family. Oh. And I was born in 56. So probably in the 40s, yeah. Probably has Show it days. again. It probably has Show it again. So good. It's, tell me their names. Jose Brockberger, Berta Teitelbaum. They both passed uh, two years ago. Uh, when did they pass away? My father passed in 99 and my mother passed well, five years ago. Yeah. Well, Caddy, it's been a pleasure so uh, interviewing you. you. And um, I appreciate all the wonderful information. Well, I hope you get a taste of what my life was. We're yes. lucky to have you here in Dallas. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, it's been a good place for us. Uh, the Costa Rica was a very good place for my parents, for my grandparents and for my whole family. The, mm -hmm. uh, the juicy Costa Rica were really, they really blossomed there. And it's a beautiful community with a lot of institutions. And as I said, the, People think that we are a lot more than we are because they are very successful in academia, government, business, banks, everything. Well, your grandparents were very smart <laughs> to get out know. of Europe. They were smart to get out of Europe. I don't know if they were smart to choose Costa Rica because they have no idea. They're living. <laughs> My mother used to say that she was in this Polish school the teacher was very anti-Semitic. And she came to say that she was going to Sosta Risa. That's how they say it in Polish. And the teacher guided the map and started looking and looking and she couldn't find it. So she made fun of my mother. She was a little girl and she still remembers <laughs> her last time, her, her last memory, she remembered that teacher making fun of this Jew that was going no place because she couldn't find it in the map. She couldn't find Costa Rica on the map. map. Well, but so the little. teacher knew that she was leaving to go yeah, to Costa Rica? Yeah, Javi, uh, my dad told her she was moving to go to Sosta Risa. That's how they and say the it. And the teacher made fun because she couldn't find it on Correct. the map? That's Correct. funny. That's funny. It's painful. <laughs> that's, that's interesting. Yeah. Yeah, it was painful for her. She remembers something. She I can't believe she even told the teacher. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, their stories are like, I love the stories. I had the, the opportunity to go to Poland. Uh, Julio was lecturing in Poland. So he asked then, that was many years ago. I went again with the March of the Living and Poland looks very different now. But that will be what, 15, 16 years ago. And we requested that somebody take us to, to our places. We couldn't go to Julio's family because Galicia is Ukrainian now, not 
Poland. Oh, okay. So we were very lucky because the tour guide that we got was a woman that was the, the star of a soap opera. She was a soap opera actress. Oh, a soap opera, a soap opera, a soap opera actress. Right. Okay. So obviously she was not making a lot of money at that time. She spoke English, so she was a tour guide too, but she was famous. So wherever we go, people got very excited and asked for the autograph or the whole thing. Mm -hmm. So we were lucky in the sense that people were more open. When people go to Poland as Jews, they are not so nice to them because they think that you're coming to take over their properties. So we were very lucky. I had the address of my grandparents' house and that picture that I show you with everybody barefoot. Yeah. I find the house. And then she started interviewing the old people. It was really very moving for me, amazing. Come this lady with the shmata in the face. I remember there was this lady with this red hair. My aunt. It was really, really, really amazing what happened. Then we went to look of my mother's house and we got, she had a, a way to do it. She goes to the park and looks for the old people and start asking questions. And then she goes to the register to look for papers. Apparently my mother's family was... So they, they knew him. So I mentioned to you before that my uncle was killed because he was koshering the meat. So this, we got to the museum, they call it, I don't know what it was. And there is this man and she talks Polish to him. So she turns around and said to me, I think that he's Jewish, but he's scared to say it. So the guy, uh, who talked to him about the Teitelbaum family and blah, 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 blah. So he said, he decided that he was not gonna work anymore, that he was gonna go and show us the town. So we walk around the town. He showed me the building that my grandfather used to own. And then he took me behind and he said, and this is the place where the Shohen was killed. It was, he knew who I was. Then he took us on a walking place, two miles to a place in the forest. He said at the very end, when the Russians were coming, they put, they make everybody walk in the forest. And in the middle, they just kill everybody. After the war, the survivors came, put together all the, whatever was left of those people. And there is this monument with the, with the Metzai boy because the, the Germans took the Metzaites from the cemetery to make the, the ropes. So they make like a big monument. He really wanted me to see that. It was really a very, very special time for me. It was like six months later, he took my, my address. Mm -hmm. I get this package with a million stamps. This is when uh, Poland was just coming out of the communist world. And he sent me a lot of material of the town. He knew, he, she said he's Jewish. He's not gonna tell you, but he's Jewish. And he probably knew my family. And for his age, he probably was my uncle's classmate or something. He really wanted me to know and to keep that stuff. It was in Polish. I took it to Costa Rica. One of my uncles translated. It was the story of the town. But it was, he really wanted me to know my story. He really wanted to know when my uncle was killed. It was really, really. It was and which, a, which town is this? This is Lukov. L-U-K-O-W. That's a, there are a lot of Jews in Dallas that come from that town. And Look. my mother, uh, the Pressler's, press press you know, his Biederman, you know, you know those Bitterman. Yeah. yeah those, Rose all, Bitterman. Yeah. All yeah. those people come from the same town as my mother. I grew up with, with Susan Bitterman. Yeah, right. Exactly. So when when I went with Federation, that's how I find out. They, uh, they were, we were having a trading session 
Julio was on one side, I was on the other side, and then he comes calling me, Kathy, Kathy, there's somebody in that group that come from the town your mother is from. So it was the oldest man, you know, I don't know, I don't remember the name. Max Goldman? Maybe Max. No, no, not, not Max. Max. No, 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 Max. No, no, no. This is the pre Pregler. Pregler. Pringler, Irving Pringler. Yeah, one of them. Yeah. So I tell him the title of us and he knew the family. So when my mother came, we were invited. There are like six brothers that came all after the war. All of them. And they started, it was very interesting. They took the album of the town and they start telling my mother, this is this and this is this. And my mother said, I don't remember that. I was a little girl when I left, but they were from the same little town. I can't believe the house was still up though. And the building was, my father's house was up. The building when my other grandfather lived was not. Was they not. just showed me the place and he showed me a, Excuse me. My mind used to say that they live, there was a plaza in the middle, and the, the, the only building that has three stories was my grandfather's. So he showed me, he knew the family. He wanted me to know it was a one time in your life experience. At this, I didn't show you. This is, I, I keep this, the memory is the paper when my father became Costa Rica. Show it to the camera. Can you see that? Republic to Costa Rica. Yeah, that's the day that he became a Costa Rica. My father will tell you that the best thing that ever happened to him in his life was to come to Costa Rica. My father loves Costa Rica, loves Costa Rica, and I do too. Is there? They were wonderful people to to my family. And, and I hope Dallas has been equally as Dallas good. has been wonderful to us. Very, very. Well, thank we, are very, you. we are very fortunate and um, I'm Israel High. Whenever we, we, we get together, we are brothers and sisters and that's how I felt when I came here. Thank you so much, Candy. It's you. been a pleasure. Thank you. Okay, bye-bye. <laughs>